Coming up next on Rugby Wrap-Up, USA Rugby and Rugby Canada World Cup Talk. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by The Balanced Palette, Nutrition for Peak Performance, and Big and Whistle on West 36th Street, the world's best rugby pub. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy and Steve Lewis in Midtown Manhattan talking rugby at the Fantasy Sports Network. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy and Steve Lewis at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in Midtown Manhattan talking rugby. Steven, always good to see you, my friend. And you, and you. And we have a special guest, again, calling in from the Great White North in Halifax, Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News. Brian, welcome. Pleasure to be here again. Brian, you're not, you're not wearing black. Oh, this is kind of a dark gray kind of, you know. Maybe it shows up as uh, sort of almost black. Where, where are my donuts? Where is my Tim Hortons <laughs> maple glaze from the losses, oh, the losses, geez. the losses of Canada to Team USA, Brian? <sighs> what can we do? I mean, it was close this time. Five points is we were winning twelve nothing at one point. Okay, all right. So is that is that what you're taking out of rugby these days up there? We were winning at one point. You got to take what you can get when you're up here in the frozen north, man. It's, it's the summer. Over the best of days. It was hot in Vancouver. <laughs> oh, Steve, what man. do you take out of Team USA's victory over Canada? Victories over Canada. Victories. Yeah. Well, this was the least convincing. Um, as Brian alluded to, it there it was 2015, much closer game. Canada actually in control for the first half hour. Uh, much more like the Canadian teams of the past. They showed a lot of fight, a lot of vim, a lot of vigor. So, yes, we're in a contest. So I think both coaches would be pretty happy. I mean, Gary Gold, you know, he, had, he tried some different combinations, wasn't necessarily starting lineup, and they ground out a win away from home when they weren't playing well. So as a coach, that's your next best option, right? Kingsley Jones, um, I think the, the response in terms of character and the effort and the physical commitment from Canada was there. So I think both coaches be relatively happy with that as their as their final game. Brian, I'm 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 just trying to rub it in and be a little bit, bit of a, more of a jackass than I usually am. But I, I I'm thinking that Team USA is in, in a good place with depth and getting players blooded in these warm up matches. And I did like Canada's fight in this one though. I thought that they brought it, but they're pretty thin. Or how was their roster compared to what it will be in the World Cup? Yeah, well, that's been kind of one of the questions from Canadian fans is, what is our top team? We weren't really sure what uh, Kingsley Jones was thinking. He's had some, shall we say, interesting selections. Uh, I think the forwards pretty much picked themselves. The backs, I think there's a lot of debate, and I think there still will be. I think they've shown very little aside from hacking the ball down the middle of the park. We really haven't got any kind of penetration from the midfield any kind of uh, creativity going on there and maybe to be expected with the with the selections but there it is uh, you know i agree that the forward certainly fronted up it was a better game in, in that regard um against a, a, a usa team that wasn't really firing on all cylinders as you say some rusty guys out there not a full strength lineup so you know things to look at there but uh you know, and, and there's another problem for us. We lost two of our forwards, Kyle Bailey and Justin Blanchett, yeah. really important forwards too, who are now um, doubtful for the Italy game. And, and we're waiting to see if they're even going to make the plane to Japan at all. So, you know, that's that's a real blow for us. We don't really have the kind of depth that we can afford to lose players like that. Brian, for the folks at home, what is the story uh, if a guy gets hurt after the 31-man roster has been named overseas, for instance? Right, so you've got your 31-man roster. If someone gets injured, uh, you can choose to replace them, in which case they can't come back into the tournament. They're out, and you have to bring the other player in uh, a minimum 48 hours before the next game. So if you have an injury at the the captain's run 24 hours the game before, you can't bring in a specialist scrum half or specialist hooker. you got to use someone already in the squad. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much where, how it works, and the squad always stays at 31, unless they're suspended, in which case they're not allowed to be replaced. That makes sense. Steve, Team USA, how do you like the roster? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, Gary Gold has settled on his roster, you know, and his coaching staff prior to this. So I think when you look at that roster, it's pretty much as you would pick. I don't, I don't think there's much controversy, perhaps Chance Wingluski, a little unlucky at prop. But I think everyone else is pretty much, you know, what it should be. And, and, and it's looked that way for a while. You know, he's, he's got some... 
you know, benefits where you can play someone like Augsburger can cover scrum half yeah. and wing. You know, Hooli can cover fullback and fly half. There might be a little short in the center if they pick up an injury. Paul CK, Campbell, Marcel Brash can play it. But um, that, that would be my only uh, concern. Maybe it's center. Um, I think they've got the combinations right back five. And, and front row, they've gone with, with the obvious people. Yeah, you got, you got three players going for the third World Cup each. Blaine Scully, Eric Fry, and Threaten Palamo, who has come back. Well, he, he's probably, the, for me, the surprise inclusion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and you know he, he came back. He thought he was done playing rugby. I saw him at the, the club championships up at Columbia. Right, that was last year. Yeah, and he said he was he, he was all bummed out because he thought his rugby career was over. Cut to Houston Sabercats end end of the season run. He's part of that, coming off the uh, DL so to speak, and now he's on a rug, rugby World Cup team. Kudos to him, uh, Brian. How do you think Canada's going to fare in the rugby World Cup? You think they'll live up to expectations for Canadian fans and administrative people, or come up short? Well, I think the expectations, to be honest, are pretty low. <laughs> I think everybody now is on the <laughs> let's just beat Namibia bandwagon, whereas before we might have been hoping for, you know, maybe to give Italy uh, a run for their money. You know, although Italy hasn't really been impressive in the buildup, neither is Canada. So I just uh, looking at the two sides, I just I just don't see even Kingsley Jones has admitted it's going to take an extraordinary effort to uh to even just compete with Italy. So I think that's a, st a stretch too far. So uh, I think it's basically uh, get through South Africa and New Zealand gauntlet uh, with some kind of pride intact, try not to ship 100 points and, uh, and beat Namibia somehow. All right, Steve, without picking uh, rounds or matches or whatever, do you think USA is gonna, the USA is going to live up to their expectations? Yes. Or your expectations? Yes, I think the U.S. will beat Tonga. I think they will... They've got three tough ones after that. Um, I would like to think they run one of those guys close. I think they I think, think they got a bunch I think, of chance too. I think I think Argentina. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think they're gonna be very competitive in some of these matches, more so than people expect. They're they're athletic, they're hungry, they're cohesive right now, they've worked together hard. Um if I'm not mistaken, this is the most work a team has had that has had the experience that they had. In other words, we haven't had a team this with professional players on the roster as much, and now we do because of the MLR, and the team being training together for as much. Yeah, it's the best prepared team that's ever left, left this country. I guess that's it. an easier way of saying yeah, it. Yeah. Exactly, and it's uh, probably the most talented and, and coached and all the rest of it. So, um, But they're going up against England. I mean, England's a juggernaut, look like they're... Dare I say it, hitting form at the wrong time for yeah. me. Oh. France always get it right at the World Cup. Argentina, no mugs. Tonga can be good any given Sunday, as it were. But, um, you know, it's not hopeful. I mean, you, you go out there and you put your best foot forward and they're, they're playing the top guys. I am confident they will acquit themselves well. All right, Brian, any final thoughts? Because we are out of time on this segment, unfortunately. What do you want to say on behalf of your Canadian? Friends. <laughs> My Canadian friends? Oh, A lot of pressure. Well, I'm sorry we... Wait, I'm sorry we couldn't uh, put together a, a more, uh, I don't know, a more co competitive side for this. But, uh, hey, look, it, it, it's, they're a good bunch of guys. Maybe say hello to them after the game. Uh, maybe a couple uh, friendly wagers. They, I hear we like uh, maple Dude, donuts if, or something let me, let me give you Let me give you Rugby <laughs> World Cup 101 advice, okay? Right now on the air, you should be picking them to win every match so that when you see them over in Japan, they bring you to the <laughs> – to the pub afterwards, and thank you. So I got a here. question for you. Yes. Halifax, Nova Scotia, where Brian's from. What does Nova Scotia mean? It means uh, New Scotland. <laughs> Next question. Didn't flunk it. Didn't flunk Come it. On. Geography, an American getting the geography me. question right for once. I also studied languages, pal. What language is that? French, Spanish, what, Polish. What language is that? What language is that? your body. He's the. Answer the Pick question. That one up. I don't have to answer questions. It's my show. <laughs> and if I answer questions and they're wrong, so what? Anyway, we are. Oh, but, but we have some breaking news. Hold on. I can tell you this because there's been a lot of kerfuffle about the naming of the new head coach for uh, Rugby United New York and Major League Rugby. We have, I can tell you definitively, it is not this man. There you go. Rugby wrap up with breaking news. Uh, it is not Bester Hoyle as the new head coach of Rugby United New York. So take him off your lists, everybody. And one final point, 
This here, that is the Albany State Great Dane. They got destroyed by my University of Buffalo in Albany with a guy from Buffalo in the sin bin with a red card from the 30th minute. Destroyed at home, Great Danes. Go Bulls. All right, there you have it. On that note, I want to thank Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News, Mr. Stephen Lewis, the debonair, globetrotting rugby correspondent and world sevens coach. That I'll, take that. I'll take I'll that. I'll take that, huh? And, I, I, and I'm Matt McCarthy. For those gentlemen, on Rugby Wrap-Up at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in New York City, signing up.